Wow. Holy. I, you know, I can't believe, like, you talk about 2013 moving into 14. What a blast of uh, weather conditions that will make history or has made history that will last in everybody's mind for how many years? Wow. <laughs> I mean, minus 41 degrees temperature. I got to tell everybody, I wasn't here to experience it, but where I was is down in Panama. And in Panama, that's South America, Panama, not Panama City, Florida. And uh, interesting, you know, there was a almost a half a day of conversation about the weather in Toronto. And can you imagine, like, that conversation, you talk about making headwaves. I mean, everybody's talking about Rob Ford making his name across the country. But interesting enough, down in Panama, <laughs> the weather conditions was chatted with people from Colombia and Venezuela and Panamanians, and um, it was interesting. So we did have a play-by-play report. So when we returned... Fantastic. Now the weather seems to taper it off. Hopefully we won't have experiencing that any longer. But you know what? That's what life is all about. Life is about different experiences. It really is. And uh, whether it be like my vacation, for instance, or your vacation, or maybe your family or the birth of your children or your parents or your friends or maybe new jobs. Political activity. That's an interesting one. It's always part of our life. It's always at the forefront. And why? Because that's where the decision-making process is being made. And these are by the elected officials who you trusted to vote for because you believe that they had a platform that was going to help, whether it was helping the environment, the economy, Anything having to do with our lifestyles and where our country is going to. So whether it is at the uh, provincial level or whether it's the federal level or even for that matter at the municipal level, there are important issues out there. And a lot of times, you know, we get so busy with our day-to-day activity that we don't always pay attention. And what's really fascinating is, is that they talk a lot about, you know, how many people go to vote. And did you know that the majority of voting is actually coming from the seniors? The fascinating part about it is, is that the young adults of today, and even like families, I know they're busy and so on, but it doesn't take that long. Honestly, really, I think our government needs to sort of look forward to online voting. Because all of a sudden, if we could have like online voting, I think that uh, we'd get much more participants and certainly people that are going to be more keen on um putting out their vote for candidates, and maybe we're going to end up with better candidates. I don't know. Food for thought. And the reason why am I talking about this? This is the condo expert (laughs) radio show. Well, hey, you know what? Condominiums are affected by provincial government decisions. And why? Because the Condominium Act falls under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Consumer Services. Therefore, it is legislation, and that legislation affects... 1.3 million lives and growing. I can see the condo expert, this show, I can see me, Linda Pinizzato, telling you within the next year that, guess what, two years, maybe a year, two years, guess what, we've hit 1.5 million, maybe 1.8 million. All I know is that the numbers are growing. You know, a few months back, I got a fantastic telephone call and uh, I had a, a great conversation with a gentleman who stays very proactive with a lot of things happening in the political world. He's actually a financial consultant and uh, he was involved or actually um, spearheaded a conference called the Renaissance Conference. And the reason for this conference was to, to pull together a lot of different politicians and and key associations that would have invaluable input on different things that are happening. So before I go any further about what it's all about, I'd like to welcome Varesh to the show. He is with Blue Umbrella Financial Services. So Varesh Mathur, thanks so much for coming on to the Condo Expert. Thank you, Linda, for inviting me to your show uh, this morning. I'm quite excited to uh you know, answer some of your questions that you might have about what I do with with this conference. I definitely am. You know, it's funny because uh, even the report, like the finalized report, I unfortunately was out of the country at the time, but one of our representatives, Bob Coffey, 
was, you know, speaking on behalf of the Condo Owners Association. And I've noticed that uh, you had a number of very interesting panelists and speakers and people that are actually involved. How did you come across, like, how many years have you have you put together the Renaissance Conference? The Renaissance Conference has been going on for the last 27 years. This is the 27th conference. What the Renaissance Conference is, you, you said something earlier. It's about uh, politics affects every aspect of our lives, how we live, uh, the roads that we drive on, the license that we need to, to work, and all that, and education. And... When we choose our uh, politicians, we're choosing, to, we're we're electing them to do things for us. To uh, we have some ideas, and uh, we're, we're electing our representatives to to get those ideas uh, in, into law. And part of the political process is these elected politicians; they need ideas to work on, and the ideas come from the average person like myself and you. And what the Renaissance Conference does is, is the is the public gets together in conjunction with these politicians. We we have them in the room. This is what the people are talking about. Let's uh, put them in front of you, get, get these ideas, and let's see if we can bring some changes or some uh, legislation or regulations that can facilitate some of the ideas. And one of the f- few things that that has resulted because of the Renaissance Conference, transportation issues, for example. This year we were talking about uh, challenges of urban centers, and gridlock, education, and home ownership. Exactly, I noticed that actually, and uh, you know some of your your key provincial parliament. Mm-hmm. Figures that came were Brad, Brad Duguid, Bass Balkasun, Mitzi Hunter, got Joe Dixon and Sue Wong. I noticed here actually as well that Tracy McCharles was invited, but unfortunately it looks as if she wasn't able to come and was represented by our Kofi Achimbong. That's her executive assistant. Oh, I see. Okay. And no, you know, the, the topic that you have, I mean, living in urban centers, especially uh, I noticed that you had a really good overview of the transportation gridlock in urban centers. And I know that that is really at the forefront because of the, you know, the mass amount of commuters and the transportation issues that we have pretty much all over the place, in particular in Toronto is really bad. Well, uh- well, Toronto is pretty bad, and a lot of uh, communities, they're bedroom communities, they're coming into Toronto to, to work, and they're living in places like Mississauga, Hamilton, and other areas, mm-hmm. and they all come into Toronto, and that is causing a lot of lost time in, in, in commuting. I can see. Well, you know, you know, it's funny, too, and I can't forget, because I'm noticing here you had retired Jerry Phillips, and uh, that's amazing. So he was the MPP for Scarborough Agent Court. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's the same uh, riding now that Sue Mr. Wong. McCharles is. Is that not Scarborough uh, Agent Court? No. Uh, Scarborough Pickering. No, she's it's, in Pickering. Scarborough right, Pickering. that's what it is. Okay. So he has uh, hosted the Renaissance Conference for over a quarter of a century. Yes, in fact, it was uh, Jerry Phillips uh, who initiated the the conference uh, to get ideas from from the public. And the idea was that you go out to the uh, associations because every association Jerry has an association that runs his uh, uh, his political arm. Right. Right. And so, I got to tell you, I love this. I'm breaking in here on this, and sorry if <laughs> I didn't move forward with the transportation. But I had to. I think this is great. This is great. It's important. It's very important because w- what do politicians want? They want to know what we want. Exactly. So by doing this, we're giving ideas to them. This is what we want on transportation. Metrolinks, for example, was a direct result of the Renaissance Conference. The The population of Ontario says, look, there should be a overall authority on, on transportation. You know, linking Toronto with Hamilton, with Mississauga, with all the other, uh, all the other regions, there should be a way to get people together in, but, in a unified way. But the thing that you've done, 
Okay, like I, I'm going to look at it in in two hats here. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I think what's happened here is fantastic. I'm really impressed because you've opened the door to not just speak to like I'm going to give you an example: the Condo Act review. Mm-hmm. Okay, they put a shout out to say, condo owners, come on, let's listen to you. Okay, come forward. We're going to have a meeting. We want to hear what you have to say. A condo owner, one owner, doesn't really know what's going on. The board maybe knows. The associations in the neighborhood know. The representatives involved with ratepayers associations, they know. Condo owners associations, they know. Mm -hmm. Associations for fire and safety, police associations, all of these associations who are people that are very dedicated because they're involved in nonprofit associations are the key people that you need to listen to because they have the information. Yes, they do. But that information is useless and I get, unless the people who, who need that information have access to it. Exactly. And, and so if you turn around and you get you know, your self-involvement and all the people that are participating in the Renaissance Conference, and Jerry Phillips here, who is a retired MPP and so actively involved in having put this together, that shows that opening of embracing other people that have a big heart because it takes a big heart, a lot of dedication to be involved in associations. Yes, it does. And uh, what we try to do with the Renaissance Conference is bring all the stakeholders together. Mm-hmm. We bring the policymakers, the government. We bring the associations like the, uh, uh, the condo association and, the, and people at large and get them into one room and present the ideas. This is, uh, the, the, the industry experts are saying, look, this is uh, how things work. They need to get this information to the policymakers, the government, mm-hmm. and also get it appropriate information to the people that are affected, people like myself who own a condo. Exactly. And, and, or other things uh, like the roads, uh, Metrolinx, because I'm in sales, just like yourself, I'm in insurance mm-hmm. sales. And uh, gridlock is a major problem for me. And, you know, because you're in sales and, you know, being involved in financial services, insurance and investments, you will have a firsthand communication and alertness towards what's going out there. Because you've got clients, you're dealing face to face with people all the time. Mm -hmm. And and those are key elements. And that's why it, it can be very powerful if that kind of mechanism is in place. And I mean, moving forward on this is fantastic. I'm very impressed. You know, I noticed here that John Torrey, CEO, Greater Toronto Civic Action Alliance, let's work together. He Mm -hmm. was a keynote speaker. Yes, he was. And and what we try to do at the Renaissance Conference is to bring industry experts Mm -hmm. in front of the average person and the policymakers. So we want to have an impact. We want to see legislation and, and regulation being put forward and give some urgency to the politicians. Because every politician, their biggest fear is not being elected. Oh, absolutely. Right? A hundred percent. And that's sad because, okay, we all know that we don't want to be losing our jobs. So, you know, I mean, everybody feels that way. It's not just, it's not politicians. I mean, everybody does. Right. But the way they're going to get reelected is going to be because of service, because of dedication, mm-hmm. and because they're staying in tune with what the public not only wants, but what they need. What they need. And that's very true. The industry experts mm-hmm. will give the, um, all the expert advice uh, mm-hmm. to the politician and also to to the average uh, public. And once the average public buys into it, then they become not lobbyists, but then the politicians are accountable to, to, the, to the electorate. So if the elected, uh, the, those people who elect the politicians buy into it, then they are individual lobbyists. And if you add them all up together, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a major force that politicians cannot ignore. And this is what the Renaissance Conference is meant to do, right. is uh, get the industry experts to uh, talk about this to the average public, mm-hmm. let them educate them, understand them, so now they can uh, lobby the government. Look, this is what we've learned, and this is what we want, and this is how we want you to do it. 
Well, you want to know why the Condo Owners Association did jump on board with this when you gave me the phone call, Varesh? I'm going to tell you why. Is because after we had a very solid conversation to understand what the Renaissance Conference was about and what mm-hmm. you were looking for, where the initiatives, the motives, and uh, you know the end result would be, mm-hmm. the key thing that uh, we found was is that it wasn't what we're seeing. I'm sorry, but at the Condo Act Review, we're not seeing where it's service-related trades that are all coming in and trying to tear down the doors so that they make sure they protect themselves. We weren't seeing that. What we see is is that basically what John Tory has made a quote here, take the initiatives that work and replicate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, everybody knows if something is not working, it is not working. So if you then go and you want to try to fix it, if you have too many people who are involved because of self-interest, you can't fix it because there's too much opposition. So when you have something as strong as the Renaissance Conference and you're, you're inviting input from representatives of general public. Mm-hmm. And granted, yes, you have to have some, you know, service involvement, like, like Metrolinx, for instance, but that is important because what they're going to do is going to cost a lot of money and they need the general public to be on board. It wasn't a case of inviting the builder mm-hmm. that's going to build the roads. It wasn't a case of, of, you know, inviting the people that are going to install the sewer systems for or the people. You see where I'm coming from? It's not... It's not the actual service trades that are going to be hired to do what Metrolinx is finally going to be. It's actually the overall decision of working with the public and the associations and the politicians Hi there, you to come be- with a solution. Well, this is the whole idea behind of this conference, is to basically to educate yeah. all parties, the, the public in, in general, the industry experts, and the government. We're, we put them all in one room. Mm-hmm. We have... When we organize this, whatever topic that we choose, we try to bring industry experts, uh, like we did with homeowner protection. Mm-hmm. Uh, I exactly. Actually, I yes. wanted you there, but I know I would have. Yeah. I would have loved to. I was in China. Uh, I had yes. business in China, and I think I was like three days. If I had to come back three days earlier, I could have been at the conference. And but. the other thing that uh, we want to bring industry experts like yourself and uh, Mr. Coffee, mm-hmm. and in fact, he did a wonderful job in uh, in, in his presentation. The second group of people that we want to bring in are the politicians responsible for that field. Absolutely. So, so we have the industry experts, and then we have the the politicians responsible for, for that particular topic. And then the third uh, stakeholder are the public. Perfect. And that is the... That is the triangle of success, because you hit all the different elements, you're going to be able to come up with good solutions and suggestions. So we're educating all three stakeholders at the same time. Exactly. And once they understand what's at stake, it's very easy to then, for the average person to approach their um, elected official uh, individually or in mass and said, look, this is what we've learned. And this is where we want you to go with uh, with these topics. I love it. You know, I think that that is uh, that's the way that these kind of conferences have to be um, put together. Because if they're not, you're not really getting the end results that you need. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the Renaissance Conference and how, what the impacts were of the discussions with Metrolinx and a lot of other great things that were happening. You know, interesting, the way that this setup was, I really would p- like to put a shout out to the Canada's Public Policy Forum, because you know what, you got to take some lessons from Renaissance Conference. I don't really know if you're really conducting things the way you should be on the Condo Act Review. So, but that's my thought. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato of the Condo Expert, and I will be right back. 